Uh, it is your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships that fund so much of what we do here in this operation. And then we're more than happy for the TV show after it's aired live, then be leaked out onto the web to tens of millions of people. That's our goal. broadcast coming to you from Virginia. In the last two hours, I pulled out with my fellow info warrior out of Chantilly, a suburb of D.C., and I'm pointed to south. Then I will turn east, west, and then go to my beloved home state of Texas. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Obviously, my voice is uh, laboring a bit because I've been bullhorning since last Wednesday straight through to just about two hours ago. What was it, two hours ago, guys, that we, uh, Aaron, that we, that we got back from the, the protest and the globalists leaving early? Henry Kissinger, Bill Gates, all of them getting caught on tape. We have some of those photos up at Infowars.com right now and on our Twitter at Real Alex Jones. I should also add that before I come back from this breaking it into all the big developments geopolitically, but also Bilderberg and how big a deal it is that it's been blown wide open, I will be on Coast to Coast AM for a full hour tonight in the first hour with George Norrie. So that's midnight central, 1 a.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. or 11 p.m. Mountain, uh, 10 p.m. Pacific. So that is coming up tonight as well. Coast to Coast AM dot com is their website. I'm Alex Jones of InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. I am a bit shell shocked just by shaking thousands of hands in between bullhorning, filing reports, talking to uh, insiders and sources, and dealing with the police. It has been a circus of the last four days. Really, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday were just wild. Uh, Saturday was uh, pretty darn wild as well. We've learned a lot of the inside scoop from Bilderberg 2012. Uh, the establishment is not pleased. The bullhorning was so loud that I'm even more deaf uh, than I was before. In fact, I've got to put a note here about bullhorning. I've got to tell you about this. We learned how to take megaphones and bullhorn into one and then to another. Not just everybody talking on different bullhorns, but have one person through a string of bullhorns, like something out of Dr. Seuss book, and it does something with the residents. Like when I scream in a bullhorn, it's even louder. It, it somehow puts out more sound. People don't understand that. It's not just talking into one, it's the yelling into one. I'm legendary for that, really discovering it. I'm sure others have discovered it as well. This, though, got so loud that it was causing me to have migraine headaches and I would have to go lay down on the ground. I mean, it was so loud. Charlie Skelton of The Guardian said that he had to get away from it. And we were shaking the windows of it because the one area where they have the conference area is the one area that sticks off the property to like 40 feet from the street. They put up these big fences and black tarps. People ripped those down, by the way. And it was shaking the building. And the first day, the police were really nice. Then some of the more younger people got there and yelled at them and stuff for no reason. And then they got a little bit of abusive back and they were under orders but by the time they all listened to my radio show well, a lot of more already listeners we have that on video and then they got in trouble saying they were nicest police i've ever seen anywhere uh they're in roanoke virginia uh, the county there yeah fairfax county i just called it roanoke because that's where we're, <laughs> i'm man my brain is fried fairfax county police and then today, we were saying, who supports the Constitution? They were raising their hands. Who doesn't like those globalists in there? They were raising their hands. It was amazing. The, the, the police were looking into the Logan Act. They had iPads out looking at Bilderberg's statements and quotes about world government. And the, I would tell the cops, look up the UN telling Congress three months ago they now run the U.S. military. The cops looked it up and were freaking out, as they should. <laughs> 
and they were looking up all the names. It was they were investigating like we do, and by the end, they were absolutely on our side. It was it was amazing. We'll be right back. Uh, big news straight ahead. Stay with us. It is Sunday, the third of June, two thousand and twelve. We're going to be here for the next two hours. If my voice is even more frog-like than normal, it is because I have been bullhorning probably five to six hours a day for the last four days, four and a half days or so. And folks always ask, Alex, why is your voice so deep and scratchy and gravelly? Uh, I, I did not have uh, that deep of a voice, as you can hear on my radio show, if you heard tapes of it 17 years ago. It was there. The intense screaming at demonstrations and bullhorning, and I guess not being voice trained, is the reason. So I guess in a way, uh, no weapon formed against us shall prosper because it is a signature voice, that of an 80-year-old man, I guess, and folks like it. Enough of that, though. Just letting you know why I'm a little bit uh, deeper in the octave here today. We are going to have open phones in the first hour for the thousands, thousands of people that came to Chantilly, Virginia through Wednesday right through this afternoon. I've now gotten in the InfoWars Command bus, and we have pointed it uh, south, and then we'll point it west on our trek back to Tejas, back to our beloved Texas. Uh, but it's just wonderful to meet the people from all over the U.S., Canada, Germany, England that came, uh, Mexico, uh, that came to the Bilderberg event. We totally sh devastated it. I'm going to go over that, why that's important, the massive international news coverage, the massive coverage here, the Washington Post, for the first time in its history, because they were the only media allowed in back in the 50s, that they're part of it, reported on Bilderberg, but didn't point out that they'd been part of it throughout history. Uh, just that, oh, by the way, our owner got invited this year. So they did do that, London Guardian, I don't know, seven, eight big reports. Uh, the Post got published in hundreds of newspapers. The Associated Press, or republished, uh, covered it. Obviously, that's in thousands. Uh, this is devastating. They want to keep it a secret because there have been multiple, there were, what, indictments and stuff, but the Prince Bernhard got away with it and got out of the country, the guy that started it, the Nazi. Uh, the Lockheed Martin scandal in the 70s, Hillary got fined 300 and plus grand, it was 335,000 back in 94 for being at a meeting, a Bilderberg meeting, and got caught uh, discussing uh, with big insurance companies how to scam folks with her health care plan claiming it was socialist health care. I'm not even for that, but it was worse than that. It was corporatist, where the insurance companies control the care, cut back what you can get, but charge you more and make you buy it. That's why the insurance companies wrote Obamacare. And the big companies, of course, are all exempt. So that's unjust weights and measures. We're going to be breaking all that down today, but I want to hear from people that were at Bilderberg this year. I also found out that the SWAT team have been listeners of the Fairfax County, Virginia um, Police Department since I was there four years ago. They found out about the show. They had it at the same Marriott Conference Luxury Center. And the police found out about us then, and then the entire SWAT team became listeners. I was told by one member of the SWAT team, I later ran into another one who was out there for riot control and was like, you know, hey, we love the show, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, uh, you know, don't cross the street again or I'm going to get fired if I don't arrest you. But then I just said, okay, arrest us. And they had to stop that because I looked up the law and said, your commander cannot tell you to not let us cross the street here. Because I went through the code with them and they said, we know, we know. Tell them that. So a lot of stuff happened. It was, it was wild. The police, by the end, totally came over to our side. We'd say, raise your hands if you're against the globalist in there. Uh, on video, on live feeds, so raise your hand if you support the Constitution against the New World Order. They raised their hands. It was like inches from Ceausescu in Romania when the police and military turned on the dictator, and well, you know what happened. I mean, it's really happening, folks. And and the police kept seeing like Chinese uh, ambassadors and stuff coming out. And it's well known China announced in mainstream news in the Washington Post two weeks ago that they're buying up TV, radio, movie production houses. Uh, theater chains, biggest one in the country, and they said to influence American media. A year ago, or a year and a half ago, Red Dawn, the new se sequel, or it's a, it's a remake, didn't come out because it depicts the Chinese government invading with Latin America, which is actually one of their battle plans that's been on the books, uh, that's been leaked. 
and they had to go back and just stop the movie. It's, and it may not even be released last time I checked. They're making them re-edit it and reshoot and put in with CG that it's North Koreans invading, which is laughable. They can't even, uh, it was all Western investment built China up. Uh, North Korea doesn't have cars that they didn't buy in the 50s, you know, that are U.S. or Russian made. Um, they, are, they have electricity in what, about 8% of the country. They kill millions every decade, literally literally eating humans, cannibalism, the government does. Look it up if you don't believe that. True stranger in fiction is totally insane. That's what total government is, total hell. And so we have all of that situation uh, unfolding. But to watch the police, this is a big story, because this is happening all over the country. I've already seen it happening with the military. Uh, the numbers are there. We've seen the polls. Well, I mean, a great one is 70-plus percent of all military donations to all candidates, Republican and Democrat, for president went to Ron Paul. I mean, what does that tell you? The average number is 72 percent. At one point, it was 76, but the, if you aggregate it all together, it's 72, 73. Right there, shows they're awake. Ron Paul talks about the New World Order, global government, private Federal Reserve, Bilderberg Group, false flags, everything. And I've told you now, all over the country, the police are are, are waking up. And I've noticed the more professional, uh, the better the training, the uh, the better the posture of the police, everything about them, the more they're listeners. Now, you go to New York or something, folks, and some of the police are listeners. They're the guys got their shirts tucked in. It is big, pot-bellied guys with their hats on, crooked, smoking cigars and cigarettes. I've shot video of this. Screaming at people, yelling at nice families that ask for directions. I mean, it is a lawless crew of, uh, of thugs. It's a gang. And of course, the original gang in New York was the police. That's in history books. And I guess it never changed. And they pick on the cops and aren't corrupt. It is just total thugism and are just incredibly rude to the tourists. You name it. Everybody's experienced it. Uh, it and it's getting worse and worse. It's getting worse and worse. And now Bloomberg says he's going to ban all 16-ounce and above drinks. And again, the government tells you what size your toilet is, what size light bulbs, uh, your car, your property. People are like, that really sounds like nanny state control freakism. Of course it is. You can still drink aspartame that makes you go blind and causes cancer. They put fluoride in the water, sevenfold increase in cancer in boys and men. That's only threefold in women with it. They do all of this, but then it's like, oh, everybody's getting sick. GMO and all this. Don't worry. We'll just tell you you can't have red meat. They're now saying that. They're saying they're going to restrict how much you can buy. I'm not kidding. Look it up. Salt, all these things. But meanwhile, they want to put statin in the water and make kids take it when it literally eats your brain. I mean, look it up, ladies and gentlemen. Total control freakism. I know I talked about this Friday. I talked about it right through the trip this week. All the big Canadian papers are saying that they want to start arresting people that don't believe in man-made global warming. Well, another Commonwealth country... Uh, Australia, you can look this up. Australia is to be fined 1.1 million and then arrested the second offense. 1.1 million, folks. That's, I forget the ratio, but that's a lot of money. It's, it's close to a million bucks U.S. Or, but, but if you go, I mean, look this up. I, I can't even believe it's this bad. Uh, and they say in there that if you criticize or talk bad about the carbon tax, 1.1 million Australian fine. And then jail time. And, they, it, and, and the headline said, carbon cops, and it has them quoted. Yes, we'll be in cafes and on the street everywhere. And if you criticize it, you'll be fined. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, it's a 50% tax on all the raw materials. It is going to devastate Australia. But all the big boy insiders, they're exempt. That was being discussed at Bilderberg. We're going to cover it all when we come back from break. And then at the bottom of the hour, I'm going to start taking your calls right into the second hour. And we're going to get an update um, from uh, Riding Shotgun here with me, one of the hosts of InfoWars Nightly News, 7 o'clock Central weeknights at PrisonPlanet.tv, Aaron Dykes. He's going to give you his perspective. I have no idea what he's going to talk about. I'm going to throw him on air because I want to hear his views of Bilderberg and his perspectives. But we know who the elite want Mitt Romney to take as his VP. We'll give you that intel uh, on the other side. Uh, we'll give you uh, a lot of other inside stuff from our moles. Remember, we knew the code name a month before, Palm Tree Conference. Uh, the photos we got, the latest on Ron Paul. You know, there's one thing that'll get people to really wake up and get involved and fight tyranny, and that's their children. 
So many people I talked to out there, I said, why are you here? And they said, for my children, my grandchildren. They understand the globalists are eugenicists, are incredibly wicked, are incredibly hateful towards humanity, have an idea in their minds that we're cattle, as all corrupt elites have throughout history. And I realize I do this because I love my children. I know that's a simple statement, but we all have to remember that, that this world is hurtling towards a very dystopic future. And I know my wife and children are listening because I was just talking to my wife and my three beautiful, wonderful, good children who are listening right now as they drive around Austin, Texas, listening to 590 AM KLBJ, where I'll also be back tonight in the first hour of George Norrie's Coast to Coast AM, I should add, and stations all over the country. Uh, but I love you guys, and be good, and I can't wait to see you in a couple days. I won't drive too fast, but I want to get home to see you, and I love you, and you guys drive safe. All of you, my little sweetsie pies, all of you, I love you. I love you guys. All right, there you go. Shout out to my little sweetsies who I haven't, uh, who I haven't seen in... Uh, in, a, in over a week and a half, I really feel sorry for our military to get to see their kids. And then they get their houses foreclosed on falsely by people like Bank of America, who's openly been caught taking houses they're totally paid for. It's just incredible. And again, I'm not getting into some mainstream media military kissing up. I'm, I'm talking about the military people who are on nuclear submarines, you name it, don't get to see their family for six months, nine months. It just must be hellish. Or people that work up north in Alaska on those fishing boats or up there in the timber and you know, only come in a few months out of the year. Wow. Because every time I leave my children, it just having to work all the time. I'm to stay up at the office till 7, 8 at night a lot of the time. It's just they grow up, and, you, and, you, and, and it's, it's sad. But we do all of this for our children, and if we don't fight now, they have no future. Okay, enough of me. Love you guys. So another list, I just talked to him during the break. Uh, let me give you the toll-free number if you were at Bilderberg this year. And, and the reason I got off into the whole cop segue, I was going to tell that story later, was the police officers, a bunch of them, said they listened to the show. So if you're off duty and uh, you are part of the uh, police department there, if you're part of the police department uh, there in Fairfax County and you were part of the whole Bilderberg detail, um, and maybe you're not supposed to talk about it. Whatever. If you'd like to call in on the show, we'd like to hear from you, but also everybody that was out there demonstrating, protesting the huge hordes of alternative media, forcing the dinosaur media to report on things. I'm going to define the dinosaur media today because a reporter from Salon couldn't seem to understand it. It means establishment media that toes the party line from a left-wing or right-wing perspective and makes fun of people that talk about corruption and special interests manipulating government. They call you a conspiracy theorist if your head is screwed on even halfway straight and you're not an idiot so let me give you the number it's 877-789-ALEX that's the Sunday show number it's different during the weekday 11 to 2 central show 877-789-ALEX 877-789-2539 and if you were there we'd love to hear from you my goodness I love listeners and, and, and the power of the people that love liberty the light in their eyes black, white, Hispanic, Asian, old, young north, south, east, west Canada, Germany, England, you name it. It was so humbling to be around people like that and just to have them totally counting on me and telling me how great I am. I, it's like nails on a chalkboard because I'm just an average guy doing what I have to do. And it makes me realize the responsibility I do have. And so when I screw up and do the things Alex Jones does, as you, know, you all do what you do, it, it's, 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 it's certainly the opposite of a power trip or an ego trip. Sometimes I come off as extremely arrogant. It's really just confidence and aggression and hatred of tyranny, love of liberty. But side issue, humbling to meet you all, humbling to see you all, 877-789-ALEX is the number easy to remember. Want to hear from anybody that was part of the events, any of the employees inside the Westfields, a lot of more listeners as well from four years ago. It shows the power of reaching out to the police four years ago. None of them knew who we were four years ago of the hundreds of police they had out there guarding them at taxpayer expense. And they were almost running people over, the Bilderbergs people were, and folks were asking the cops, why don't you arrest them? They said, we've been told they have diplomatic immunity. Yeah, did you know? Well, in fact, I want to tell this, the history of diplomatic immunity sometime. In fact, I'm going to write a note. I've got like 20 pages of notes here, and of course I haven't gotten to one of the points yet. But diplomatic immunity. 
see, because they continue to just expand that out until they're saying, we're going to let the carbon taxers have diplomatic immunity now. We're going to give hedge funds diplomatic immunity. That's too big to fail taken to the next level. So we're going to talk about all that. Uh, look, i got to say this. This is something I want to ask listeners that call in in the second hour after we hear from some Bilderberg folks, Bilderberg protesters. I like Rand Paul. I've known him for years. I spurred him to run. He said, I'm probably not going to. And I said, no, you really will get money. You will get support. My listeners were his first volunteers, make up part of his team. He's a great guy compared to everybody else in the Senate. Done what he'd say he'd do. Um, plays a little more politics than his dad, but just to soften the edges of what he's doing, he's very effective. Uh, and so there's no reason to sit here and bash him. But I think he'll destroy himself if he does take the VP ticket with Mitt Romney. I know they met in a closed-door session last week when I was on the road. I never covered it. People ask me about it, and uh, it's just bad. There, you know, Rand Paul said on air a few months ago when he was on, Senator Paul, uh, and he also said you know, off-air when I was talking to him during the breaks, that, well, if they do reach out to me, it's an honor to be considered for VP, but I don't think it's going to happen because I'm not going to compromise. Well, now they have reached out to him. And uh, the word is, though, Bilderberg obviously does not like that apple because they know it falls real close from the Ron Paul tree. And that's some big news on Ron Paul. Uh, the Bilderbergs are really mad at him. I'll break that down in just a moment if we have time, if not after the break. But uh, smart Republicans, and I talked to some people in the national media, people that you know have a lot of big, high-powered Republican connections over the weekend. Names, of course, will not be revealed. They said, no. I mean, what a lot of high-level Republicans want is to actually not be globalists and sell to the New World Order. They know this stuff's all real. And they think that Rand Paul would be good in there uh, because then, hopefully, it would force Romney to... to, to, to and, and, and it would be a sign that Romney uh, isn't just going to become Obama 2.0 because Obama and Romney are both paying capital finance, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, supported abortion, open borders, carbon taxes, gun control. Uh, Romney wrote the model of Obamacare in Massachusetts. That's on record. I mean, he's not exciting the conservative libertarian base, constitutional base. <clears throat> but I've got to say, they're not going to pick Rand Paul. Not because Rand Paul wouldn't even probably lie to himself and say, well, it's a great honor, I'll be able to change them from the inside. He's a good guy, but I think that, you know, that allure, he would, he would think that, the, you know, probably, you know, that, well, that he would change them, not him. But when you dance with the devil, you change, he doesn't. You stare into the abyss too long, you become the abyss. It will destroy Rand Paul politically. Uh, all the little political guys around him and stuff, they want to have the big job in the White House. They want to get into the power elite. They want Sunday news shows. They're all telling him. I know his dad isn't telling him this, but they're all telling him, hey, yeah, get in there. Doesn't matter. The word is the Bilderberg Group wants the Indiana governor, Mitch Daniels. I'll tell you about that. And then death threats against Ron Paul from the Bilderberg Group. Straight ahead. Stay with us. Coming to you live from the road in Virginia. Beautiful little town that we uh, pulled in at. I'm not going to say the name because... Anytime we do that, suddenly listeners show up, which is great, but then um, we can't get anything done. Amazing. Okay, I want to go to your phone calls, and we're going to do that uh, in a moment, folks that are uh, patiently holding here in a second. But first off, let me go through some of what we gleaned at Bilderberg 2012. The Indiana... Governor Mitch Daniels, known for privatizing everything, that means handing over already paid for infrastructure in sweetheart deals and actually increasing the taxes on the people under it for giant profits to special insiders. The opposite of privatization, but they call it that. It's crony, monopoly, fraud, gangsterism, or piratical New World Orderism. <sighs> Everybody thinks it's left and right. No, it's a bunch of scammers with inside deals hammering everybody. Uh, also, Marco Rubio may have been there. We're not sure. Our, one of our sources said it sure looked like him, but that's just one of the hotel workers. We got a couple of those sources, well, three of them total. My, I haven't been able to get a hold of my Bilderberg source in a couple of days. Obviously, they're being watched. Not a Bilderberger, but one of their minions. 
uh, continuing here, but Marco Rubio did speak at the pro-world government, pro-tyranny Council on Foreign Relations group during Bilderberg in D.C. But the word is that the Bilderberg group does not want Rand Paul. So let me just give that little message to some of Rand Paul's people that are really trying to get him into that job. The word is the Bilderberg group uh, does not like that idea. Now, they're not all powerful. They're trying to run everything. They steer things to a great extent. They want a dictatorial world government. They don't quite have it yet. I want to be clear about that. Salon was out there and a bunch of other publications. They kept saying, no, no it was Daily Caller, said, well, if they were all powerful, like you say, how could you be protesting? I'm like, they're not all powerful, but they had me arrested for 15 hours till the media found out in Canada when I got there to cover it. They death threat people. Jim Tucker's been shot at. Uh, people have died that have been reporting on this. Are you doubting there's global mafias? I mean, first the mainstream media, the, the old dinosaur media said this didn't exist. <clears throat> the globalist controlled media is what the dinosaur media is. And, and then now they're like, okay, the Washington Post, it exists. AP, it exists. All right, all these other publications, it exists, but the people that don't like it are still kooks. You know, thank God there's these elitists meeting in secret with armed Marines in plain clothes, which they later admitted. They had plain clothes ones out there with us, and it was really bizarre. I think it was some kind of Marine Corps training or something. They had these young Marines in there really acting pathetic and stupid and weird. Uh, it was bizarre. Uh, the police obviously weren't acting like that, but the Marines, very shameful, very shameful. I'll just say that again. A lot of Marines on our side, veterans and people, but the little young Marines they had out there stirring up trouble, very bizarre. Uh, going through some of the other uh, big developments coming up, Aaron's going to break this down in a segment in the next hour. Aaron Dykes, one of our researchers, riding with us on the trip, that the Syrian Transitional Council member was there, and that's the puppet government in waiting that the bankers that have hijacked this country are planning to install in Syria. And Bilderberg, the word we got three days ago was, they want a green light, boots on the ground. I turn the news shows on the day after this, and there's the Secretary of Defense, there's Hillary, there's all of them saying, we've got to have boots on the ground, not just a bombardment. We're going to invade, basically, because of the horrible massacres. Oh, my gosh, the ceasefire failed. And it turns out the massacres, like dead babies out of incubators in Kuwait, which they admit was a PR stunt, turns out they've got al-Qaeda. This is on record in the back of the paper. Blowing up Libya, blowing up Syria, targeting military bases, police stations, you name it. And it's real Al-Qaeda in new black Al-Qaeda uniforms with Al-Qaeda patches, blowing up everything and shooting people. We've had reporters that have gone there, and our so-called government, this criminal group, is funding them to do all this and blame it on Assad. And again, I'm not saying Assad's a great guy, but I'm not saying Gaddafi was a great guy, but compared to Al-Qaeda, I mean, Assad compared to Gaddafi was a great guy. It's kind of like Al-Qaeda, and then way up the chain of much less worse is Gaddafi, and then Assad is pretty much a stabilizer. But that's why the Russians are giving them arms. I'm not saying the Russians are good either, but again, the banksters are running our country head-on into these people. The Russians are putting in spit snats, weapons, because it's their only port in the Mediterranean. Uh, Medvedev has said they may nuke the West now because of weapon systems being rolled in. Again, the globalists are playing a very, very, very dangerous game with all of our lives. They had uh, Kasparov, the big chess champion who's known CIA there, who they run for president in Russia. I mean, this is all about overthrowing other countries, but not even to democratize them. That's just the cover. They do this to bring in tyrannies. I mean, they are killing blacks, over 40,000 of them. The news, even mainstream dinosaur media even admits, as we told you months before it would happen in Libya. Uh, the Al-Qaeda's flags are flying everywhere. The women are having burqas put on their heads. Women are being kicked out of the colleges. It's like Afghanistan or something. Uh, same thing in Egypt uh, to a lesser degree. Same thing. Al-Qaeda that the criminal hijackers of the U.S. government and NATO have said, on record, are going to expel all Christians, and they're some of the oldest Christian communities in the world in Syria. Huge Christian community, lives in total peace you know, pre-Muhammad Christian groups. Uh, they're going to be expelled, and the Jews are to be held and killed. This is the main group our criminal government is funding on record. I mean, look this up, folks. You, we've got articles at Infowars.com where mainline journalistic groups admit this. I'm ranting. It's just so criminal. And then I was reading Fareed 
Zarkaya, that, that CNN puppet that nobody watches, who I ran into in a CNN green room one time in New York last year, flipped out on me, knew full well who I was. He's been at Bilderberg, one of the few token media people two or three a year that go. He says, quote, and the article and the video is up on Infowars.com right now, starve Syria. He says militarily blockade food and medicine like they did Iraq uh, for more than a decade before bombarding it again. And again, Saddam put in by the CIA, shut up, all of that, told to invade Kuwait, look it up, April Gillespie. I mean, this is so evil, ladies and gentlemen. So incredibly off the charts evil. Aaron is going to be talking about that. Uh, the big news is people first saw a report on this, some of them, and said, why would they be shooting their mouth off about Ron Paul at a Bilderberg meeting? You drive through, you see Ron Paul and, and Infowars.com stickers everywhere. You're being yelled at. When they get out of their cars after driving through the gauntlet our bullhorns on the street, and people jumping in front of them, the cops dragging them off and all this, they get out, and high-level Bilderberg people would cuss and yell and say, I'm sick of Ron Paul, I hate him, because we got people in the hotel. Well, Jim Tucker, he went in a week, because he lives there in Virginia, was handing out cards. Hey, call me when they're rude to you. Call me when they say you can't look in their eyes. Call me when they treat you like filth. That's how journalists do it, and they call you. My source confirmed what Tucker said. He said, yeah, they use Ron Paul like an expletive. When they get out, they're real mad, some of them. And they sit around and talk, talk garbage. Can you imagine to who? Bellhops, people like that. I could say bellhop because there's so many in the hotel, they won't be able to nail it down. Uh, they shoot their mouth off in the bar to waiters. I'll leave it at that. I mean, we've had dinner with some of these people at like 2 a.m., okay? <laughs> we got some hardcore stuff. And it's already been transmitted to the office. You can't pull us over and do stuff to us to stop us from getting out, okay? I want to say that to the Bilderberg group as well. But we've got it. We know how to get it, okay? Because they treat these people as people like, no way I'm not talking to you. And we just go, just take the card. We're not offering you money. When you hear how evil they are, you're going to want to call us. And they do. Just like the cops have been around them now and are suddenly on our side. These are some, look, these are arrogant people that are for killing 90% of the world's population in their official reports, UN, you name it. So I'm ranting. We're coming back going to your calls. The point is, headline, Bilderberg group wants Ron Paul dead. InfoWars headline was Bilderberg share Ron Paul death wish. And they would get out after being bullhorned, all these big Ron Paul banners and InfoWars banners. They would get out other cars because, you know, they come through, they drive through the 200 yards or so around to the front of the big conference Marriott Luxury Center. And they get out and started saying, one German guy said, I want to put Ron Paul on plane with all his supporters. And once they reach over, the ocean, the Atlantic, blow it up and blame it on Al-Qaeda. I mean, this was heard. Now, my source didn't confirm that, but he said, yes, they're very angry at Ron Paul over cussing his name. All right, we're going to come back, go to your phone calls, and a ton more. I haven't scratched the surface. Your calls. All right. We are back live. I'm going to go to your calls now, right into the next hour, and a ton of other news items. But record numbers of Russians, Chinese nationals, Syrians, Israelis, uh, at this Bilderberg group meeting, unprecedented, and that means invasions all over the place. And again, foreign mega banks, Rothschilds, Rockefellers, who are now openly merging their dynasties, the Rockefellers have always been their front, just as I told you, Google was NSA, now it's admitted. Folks, this is, this is real, okay? Uh, they are, again, hopping mad that Bilderberg's been blown wide open and is in hundreds of publications in the U.S., hundreds and hundreds overseas, Dozens of big papers, and I want to commend DrudgeReport.com for helping break the Berlin Wall uh, of the blackout. The Washington Times was the first mainstream publication to do it this week. Uh, the London Guardian as well. Uh, WorldNet Daily, WND.com. Uh, of course, uh, so many others. Bizarrely, Glenn Beck's people came out and made jokes about it, I guess because they support Huntsman, who was also there. And bizarrely, uh, Tucker Carlson, who top Republicans believe is a Democratic operative, I've been told that by high-level sources, uh, the Daily Caller was out there saying it didn't exist. So very bizarre uh, to have the London Guardian reporting on it very seriously, Washington Times, Drudge Report, and then libertarian groups supposedly running around saying it doesn't exist. Uh, very bizarre. But I guess that's because one of the founders of uh, a lot of the online banking systems uh, is uh, there and wants to kind of co-opt the libertarian movement, Mr. Thiel. Okay, uh, with, uh, without further ado, got a lot of other news coming up, uh, but right now let's go to Toby in Pennsylvania, Mark, uh, Sholiak, Rick, Vinny, and others. 
Uh, Toby, you're on the air. Welcome. Were you at Bilderberg 2012, my friend? Yes, I was. What did and, you uh, make of it? Give us your report. Oh, no. Um, I thought it was great. You were great. And uh, I was there uh, at the time when the sprinklers went off and you went over to the police. Man, when the, the, oh, yeah, they turned the sprinklers on. Yeah, that do was you think funny. they turned them on or is that a time thing? What do you think? I don't know. The world will never know. I only focus on what I can uh, document. But um, you know, I, I should I'm, add, again, most people that were there only came through for a day. And we had up to 600 people at one time. It had to be two, 3,000 people um, that were there over the five days. It was incredible. And another thing, um, today I was there for a couple of hours from uh, 10 to 12. And um, a jogger happened to be running by while the one protester was um, protesting. And as he ran by, he called him a crackpot. And that just, it just turned into a big thing. I mean, he came back. Uh, the protester said something to him. He came back, and he was, like, in that protester's face, like, ready to fight him. And it was just, well, there are a lot of people that work there. for the system. There's a lot of people who work for the system. They think they're part of it, and they get off on the shadow power. It's like the Marines. Well, one of the biggest groups of listeners we have on average, but the, the, the diplomatic security detail they had in plain clothes, um, who flipped us off four years ago and all that, they were laughing at us. It was funny. They were coming out in the crowd. They'd say, oh, I'm a big fan, then grab my hand and try to crush it, and we're just stirring up trouble. Uh, it was really sad. It was really, really sad. But, yeah, I mean, people that cuddle up to tyranny, they got plenty of them in North Korea. They're very sad. I appreciate, I appreciate your call. I got to say, though, uh, the best police I've ever seen. And then I learned why later. They're listeners. Uh, but they would tell me. In fact, some of this on live stream video. You know, we're streaming out there. They go, in fact, some of the head guys, one captain's like, look, we're getting watched by that live video camera across the street with audio. I'm going to get a lot of trouble if, uh, if I don't keep you guys out of the street. And plus, you don't want to get run over. So I get their whole point. And overall, again, some of the protesters who were younger, some of the younger cops were bugging their eyes out and everything and there was a few arguments there but that's just what happens because the cops are hearing us bullhorn the Bilderberg group calling them scum for days and the more younger and more unsophisticated cops thought we were talking about them so but overall it was it was a big victory let's go to another call here uh it's a microcosm of the world i mean in fact if i told you all the cop stories you wouldn't believe them it was amazing basically the whole swat team are daily listeners uh let's talk to mark in virginia uh go ahead you're on the air mark Hey, Alex. I got to meet you uh, yesterday. It was great. Uh, the whole thing was just fantastic. I talked to somebody who was there last year. They said you had about ten times as many people this year. And also they erected the fence this year, last year. I guess there was no fence. Is that right? Yeah, because it's on a big piece of property, usually 200, 300 yards from the road. There's only one spot that's close to the road. And uh, that happens to be where the conference wing is, so we can bullhorn them perfectly there. And Kissinger came out and was real mad this year. I mean, we nonstop ruined their entire conference. I mean, believe me, the, the windows were shaking. Had you ever heard anything as loud as 20 bullhorns going at once in unison? It was amazing. I'm, I'm, up, I'm uploading video right now. What I'm, I'm titled uh, Bilderberg 2012, well, Bilderberg Protest 2012, Approaching the Storm. And that's what it was like for me when I first came in yesterday. I walked, you know, it's about a quarter mile walk when you first. You could hear there. it a quarter mile away. Definitely. And it well, was I, amazing. I, I mean, describe that for people that were there because it was actually. I only get a migraine headache about once a year, and it's usually when I bike ride when there's heavy pollen, and I get a. I had migraines. You saw where I had to lay down to make the migraine go away because it was so loud. I was giving me migraines. I mean, it, I, my ears are ringing right now. The entire crew's ears are ringing. I believe that. I get migraines, too. I know what that's like. But, yeah, uh, I, I had I couldn't stay around there for too long either. And I just had to go back. It was more peaceful. I actually got my guitar. I was playing at the other end. But That uh, was insane. I mean, the London Guardian described it as that. Testosterone-fueled rage. I mean, it was... Th this is... I love hippies. They're good folks. There were some of them there, but this was how the patriots, this is how the gun-toting, John Deere hat-wearing, anti-New World Order, I mean, look out, world, when the patriots start protesting. This was insane. This was insane. Definitely. I'm sorry, what were you saying? Uh, this was the spirit of 1776. That's what it was like. You were you know, just routing the royalists. It, it was just It awesome. was incredible.
God bless you, my friend. Amazing talking to you. Network, uh, Richard's gone. I don't know how to work all this fancy equipment. Can somebody boost my audio a little bit? I can barely hear the callers. Of course, it's probably because I'm deaf. <laughs> probably because I'm deaf. <laughs> Aaron, have you ever heard anything this loud? No, it was incredible. You're going to be on later. I want you to write a note and talk about that. Uh, it was just amazing. Uh, that's probably it. I'm probably deaf. <laughs> I'm doing this via, uh, okay, thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and go to uh, Sholiak in Pennsylvania. I met this guy. Sholiak, what'd you think of it? Uh, Alex, um, I, I can only, like last night, um, you know, the, during the day, the, it was just electric. There was so much excitement. Um, you know, after it broke down last night, I went out with uh, and hung out with, you know, what appeared to be like com complete strangers because we're all focused on what the real problems are in this world. We know it. It just really felt like I was looking at these people. I'm like, why is it that I feel like just so at home and like these people, like I've known them my whole life. And I think that's... Really no, I was almost... Uh, in fact, I kept, I, I kept getting tears in my eyes talking to people. I mean, you talk about real brotherly love, black, white, Hispanic, you name it. I mean, this was America. This is what the global estate. This is the this is the crucifix that can bring them down. This is it. This is America. This is 1776. I can't describe it. It was so incredible. I mean, you go to some establishment socialist thing or something, there's a bunch of angry weirdos founding father stuff. I mean, am I hyping that, or, or, or is that what it was? No, I mean, it was, uh, I, I was, like yesterday, I mean, I got some lower back issues, so um, I was debating on whether to come back last night after I went up to the roadhouse. But I was sitting there, and I was talking to some guys that were in the military, and that kind of inspired me. And then you popped in there, and you started talking to us, and it inspired me to just, and of course, there was a, a few, uh, I had a few drinks there that kind of numbed some of the back pain. But it just inspired me to get back down there. And yeah, we were hanging out at the Texas Roadhouse. I was thinking about all the stuff that was going on. Like, tears came to my eye, too. Because I just got so inspired. Like, how could I even, you know, think about going and not coming back that night? Just talking to you and talking to everybody there and feeling that, you know, that, uh, that want for freedom. The black, white, uh, Asian, uh, the guy from Germany. Well, I'll tell you what it is. The universe bends towards, I agree. I mean, the, uni the universe bends towards liberty and justice. And the Bilderberg Group, folks, and God bless you, my friend. It was good seeing you in Virginia. The Bilderberg Group openly wants to shut down the world economy, carbon taxes, post-industrial world, one-child policies. These are total tyrants. They now have announced our military works for the U.N. This is the group. This is the enemy. This is the corporate takeover. It's not the Chinese. It's not the Russians. It's the foreign bankers. They have already conquered this country. We've got to get it back. We'll be right back on the other side of this quick break. Lord willing, worldwide transmission. The answer to 1984 is 1776. I've probably only gone through a third of the data, breaking news from moles, eyewitness reports, what I saw with my own two eyeballs coming up. Photos of Henry Kissinger, now up at Infowars.com. We're going to be breaking all that down, but let's continue with your calls. And we're going to take three or four more calls from people that were at Bilderberg. And then it's going to be a free-for-all, as our uh, friend Ted Nugent would say, uh, coming up uh, after this break. And again, I will uh, give the toll-free number out at that point. But right now, um, let's go to Rick in Tampa and then Vinny in Virginia. Um, but, of course, they've all been in Virginia. I guess Rick normally lives in Tampa, but he was at the Bilderberg Group meeting covering it. Uh, what did you think of what you saw, Rick? Well, I thought it was really fantastic, Alex. I want to thank you for the uh, invitation to come up and join you there. We briefed some mess. Uh, I brought a couple of my friends with me that I had the opportunity to wake up, uh, thanks to you and a lot of the other people that are working so hard to, to make this uh, Patriot movement happen. Uh, all of us are ex-Naval officers. Um, we have uh, multiple advanced degrees. We've been CEOs of uh, probably about 30 different companies and uh, been involved with uh, a lot of the business side. And I just wanted to Oh, say yeah, that no, I saw The Guardian. You, you, uh, hold on, you got interviewed by The Guardian, and you had some really good points about uh, sociology, all of it. Go ahead. Yes, thank you very much. It was great. Uh, 
uh, meeting Nick uh, Skelton and his group. Uh, they're, it's wonderful to meet people from all over the world. This is what's so fantastic about his uh, coalescing of like kindred spirits. It was great. But um, I had dinner with Stuart Rhodes, and one of the things I wanted to, to sort of a shout out, if I can just take a second, um, one of the things that our, our constitutional officers, whether they're military, or police, and sheriffs, and whatever, that have taken the same oath that uh, we have uh, to defend the, the Constitution against uh, those enemies, foreign and domestic, as well as to not uh, follow unconstitutional or unlawful orders. And I asked Stuart, I said, is it possible we might be able to take that to the next step, where if you're given an unlawful order or an unconstitutional order, are we able to not just simply step back from that order and say, no, sir, I refuse to accept that order because it is unconstitutional? Is it possible for us to turn around and then arrest them for giving us that order? And I want to hear what you have to say, but do me a favor. Turn the radio off. Okay. Turn it off. Thank you. Um, yeah, go ahead. Said, what he said was is that he said, in fact, there is a precedent in the UCNJ and in, in military law in order to stop massacres and, and other kinds of abuses. It was actually done at My Lai in Vietnam, where Lieutenant Callie was machine gunning the innocent women and children. And one of the chief warrant officers turned his machine gun on the squad and said, the next man that pulls a trigger, I will shoot you. And he, in fact, he radioed the Hueys, the gunships who were circling above Eli, and ordered them, under his command, to, to, to fire on our American soldiers if they proceeded with this massacre. So he said, yes, there's precedent for this. There's actually uh, precedent, he believes, in the civil law in order for us to stop uh, unlawful actions by the superior officers that might give them. I think that this is a very interesting point that all of the constitutional all, uh, officers need to consider. It's not just about backing away and not participating. It's actually turning it around and saying there will be consequences for those who might... Well, that's right. Them. As you know, and I want to hold you over the break. I want you to continue your points. But as you know, under common law, under common sense, is why Texas, where I live, has a law. If you're driving by and see a car wreck and you're one of the first and others aren't rendering aid already, you've got to render aid. I like the Good Samaritan laws. In fact, you are compelled. If, you, if I see somebody being attacked by five thugs, it's not because I'm a tough guy that I'm going to go up and, 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 and defend her. I cannot help it. And, and this idea that... If, if, you, if you see crime going on against the public, you just recuse yourself. That's not enough. In fact, the minimum is that you resist it. And as you said with those gunships calling them in, you have a right to resist people who are outside their common law arrest powers. That's all police have. We just constitute them with special training. Welcome to the Info War. I'm Alex Jones coming to you from the road, blasting out on the AM and FM dial. Shimo casting right now at Infowars.com. We have free video feeds uh, up there on the front page of Infowars.com. If you want to see me here, normally on the radio show when I'm in studio, we have documents, articles, video clips. By the way, did you guys get the Webster Tarpley video clip I sent you? Do you have that? No, I will get it now. Yes, yes, sir. It's yes, it's. It's on the YouTube channel. It's uploaded. It's his comments on Ron Paul. And I, Webster's a frequent guest here. I like Webster, smart historian. I disagree with him that government's the answer. And his analysis of the corrupt oligarchy is accurate, very accurate, very intelligent. But his solution, you know, he's like a guy who can diagnose a problem, but he, I don't want him doing the surgery on me. Uh, it's a pretty hilarious video. Uh, and uh, he started accusing Ron Paul of being bad because he's against the... Uh, drug war, and I explained that's been used to take our liberties, and then he went into this whole leprechaun dance. I'm, I'm not joking, the video. Uh, I'm not joking, folks. I'm going to play it later. It's up at the YouTube channel. Just link through at Infowars.com. And then we're going to tie that in with an oldie but a goodie that we've uh, aired here. So, so some comedy relief uh, in the final segment coming up today. i got a lot of other, look at all these little notes I've got written if you're watching us. I'm going to try to go over these after I take more calls. But we were just talking to a gen gentleman who I didn't, I may have got a chance to shake his hand, but I, I did, there were so many thousands of people out there overall. Uh, over the, oh, the, the, the Washington Post said two dozen. 
When I say 600 at one time over a five-day event, that's conservative. We had 300 over here, 100 over here, 200 over there. It was a giant compound, square, and we had three entrances covered, people stringing the streets. You go to restaurants nearby, our listeners, hotels all full of our listeners. I mean, it was thousands of patriots that hate tyranny. It was just incredible. Uh, but going back uh, to the callers here real quick, Rick, driving back to Florida right now via his cell phone. Rick is an owner of a pharmaceutical company. The only reason I know that is I, I read about him in the London Guardian article and the points he made about anthropology, about how men look out of the horizon for threats. You know, women uh, you know, are more concerned about GMO and fluoride. It's just it's hard, hard, hard coded into our brains. That's why they're, they're the, the, the majority of events like that. But we had a lot of women. At this event, I thought it was like a beauty queen contest or something. You go to most political functions on any stripe, and there's not a lot of women. This was this was amazing. But 20 20 percent or so were women. Great people there, old, young, you name it. Wonderful people who love freedom, all races, colors, and creeds. Uh, but he made a good point about uh, well, I mean, a lot of great points in that London Guardian article. It, it, the headline was like testosterone fueled system. Will it bring down Bilderberg? And Bilderberg did start leaving Saturday. I've never seen that. And most of them Sunday. They used to stay till Monday. Uh, we shot video Henry Kissinger just a few hours ago. Photos. That's up at Infowars.com. War criminal Kissinger pictured leaving Bilderberg. He's been convicted war criminal. But briefly, as you were on the last segment, uh, finish finish your point uh, here, sir, before we go to the next caller. Well, thank right. you, Alex. So my, my point was that from the, from the constitutional officers that there's something that they can do in order to provide consequences for people that would issue these unconstitutional or unlawful orders. Now, you used the example of the My Lai Massacre. Recap that. Well, uh, I, was, I was mentioning this idea to Stuart Roach. We were having dinner at the Roadhouse, and I mentioned this idea about taking this idea of uh, the, the Oath Keepers, where they say that they will not follow unconstitutional or unlawful orders, I said, would be possible to take that to the next step. And that would be to say, no, sir, I will not follow this order, and I in turn arrest you for trying to have me make, you know, follow this order that you are issuing to me. And he said that there is, in fact... Uh, historical and, and judicial precedents in the Well, military. there's Supreme Court rulings. There's, and, of course, he's a constitutional lawyer, top of his class. What is it, Yale or Harvard? The point is, is that there police, if they're attacking your home without a warrant and probable cause, under all common law, you have a right to defend yourself. But it's not just police. It's anything. And here are the globalists saying they have diplomatic immunity. They're trying to give the carbon tax banks diplomatic immunity. The globalists give themselves immunity and then put all these laws called Agenda 21 on us. Exactly. And my last point would be that from a civilian perspective, I have one more challenge to put out to your listeners and for them to think about one more thing. And that is one of the reasons I think that so many people remain asleep or unaware, or maybe just willfully this way, is that we have lost our sense of civic and social responsibility. Our kids in schools have been just propagandized to death to think about themselves, to say, you know, you have to take responsibility for yourself, for yourself, for yourself. They're beaten over the head, and they've lost that sense of, I am, you know, this question, am I my brother's keeper? And yes, we yeah, are. Yeah, notice that, the collectivist, exactly, the collectivist, everything's a deception. They say the state collectivizes you and and could takes all your labor and taxes and then compartmentalizes it, but you're not supposed to get together individually. That's dirty and bad and, and scary, when in truth, you're not supposed to have collectivization at the top. You're supposed to have collectivization at the bottom. So they take everything and invert it against its own logic. They try to invert everything that's wholesome and good because they're at war with that. It, very well said. I mean, this is part of the whole agenda of destruction of the family, the, 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 the ruination of parents having sovereignty over their children, etc. It's this idea of, you know, you look out for yourself. And in, with, with what's coming... It's an it's, army of one. Right, it's, right. It's, it's, it's all about you, you, you. They have magazines about it, and people think they're getting ahead because they only care about themselves. Well, then the whole society collapses when you don't care about anybody else. Very well said. And these are, thank you for the call. Do I have time to go to one more call here, guys? Before we go to break? Okay, for some reason we never get on the atomic clock around here. Uh, thank you. Let's go ahead and talk to Vinny in Virginia, where we're at right now. I'll tell you, this state is 
uber gorgeous. And I've been here before, but let me tell you, the tongue's hanging out. I like it. I know why George Washington liked it and Thomas Jefferson. Oh, yeah, baby. I like the looks. This is a sexy state. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm lusting after Virginia right now. Uh, pun intended. Uh, go ahead, uh, sir. You're on the air. Hey there, Alex. Uh, it's Clark. Yeah, I was there yesterday. Uh, I was there about a couple hours before you got there, but once you got there, man, oh, we just, that was awesome. I never been to anything like that. I mean, uh, I, I was the one. You never seen people that crazed? Like, what do you think of that big Marine Corps veteran who could bullhorn even better than me? I was like, here's the thing. You're, oh, yeah, he, well, he was, was just hitting him hour guys, after hour after hour. <laughs> And I had to the the building. Me, like, uh, flag the little one. I was dressed up, and uh, that was just awesome, man. I just, you know, people driving by with the Ron Paul flags, and oh, it's just awesome, man. It's just proud to be. It makes me proud to live in Virginia. You know, like when you talk about like the founders, how they used to live here and stuff, and. You know, how they chose to live here, you know, I always think of that. Hey, so. hey, there's one degree of separation. It's all generation after generation passes the baton. It's a clear, like, electricity connection right back to George Washington, right back to Thomas Jefferson, right back to beating the biggest empire ever, right back to putting it all on the line. That's why you feel it. When you grab hold of this and say, I choose liberty, I choose the republic, I'm against the new world order, you are literally tying into that power, and it's, it's incredible. You are tying into history. You are getting past the fear and setting your will against the tyrants. And that's when God gives a little smile and a wink. I'm telling you, you felt it, didn't you? It was my, it was my birthday, too, so it was just it made it an awesome birthday, man. It was a rocking birthday. <laughs> what did you, how loud was the bullhorn? And we had like 20 bullhorns going at once. Dude, it was so loud. It was just like, uh, at one point, it was just like, it was just everybody together was just doing it. It was just like, just. I know. Oh, it's just crazy. And the people play music through their bullhorns too, like the Megadeth and stuff, like uh, End Game and stuff like that. Before you got there, they were doing that. So it was just nuts, man. But yeah, I, that was I, the great part. Even yeah, if they kill me, I'll still be at all the Bilderberg meetings because they were playing over bullhorns. My speeches at other events. It was incredible. Yeah. Oh I'm man, I tell you, too, man. I, I put you in my songs and everything, but, uh, just like uh, David Stano. But I just loved how it, just everything the way we were all like. The, I loved the fact that you and the crowd were all together. You know, it wasn't like. You were just like in a microphone separate from the crowd. We were all together doing this. No, 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 no. That, Very, that even, so much, even, even radio hosts that are a lot smaller than I am, they... They want they want to have all these bodyguards and be up on the stage so you are in awe of them. And everybody's like, Don't you have security? I'm like, No, I got God. And and if I get killed, that makes everybody wake up. If I don't get killed, we go forward. I mean and that's what the globalists can't face is that we're all in. We're committed. There's no backing off. The point of no return, committed, it's over. We're coming for the new world order. There's no quarter received or given. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Infowars.com. I'm going to continue with your calls. Gary, Ken, Scott, Charles, Christopher, Wiley, John. We'll at least get to those six or seven calls before the hour ends. Aaron Dykes is chomping at the bit with his research about the Bilderberg Group. It's just mafia coming in, taking over pension funds, claiming that they're protecting them while they actually loot them. This is big news, and it's all coming up. It's either us or them. They are the top of the pyramid. They're an organized crime syndicate. Everything they do is about looting and conning people while dressing up in fancy suits and acting diplomatic while they do it. But a frequent guest, historian, researcher, good friend of mine, very funny fellow, uh, Webster Tarpley, his analysis is great. His solutions, I don't agree with some of them. But I went to meet Jim Tucker, the guy that first exposed Bilderberg 35 years ago last night. We did a live stream for like two hours. And I went to interview him, and Tarpley's at the, at the meeting out on the patio at, at the restaurant. And he's butting in. Let's talk about Ron Paul. We're not even talking about Ron Paul. So I'm like, okay, I'll get to you in a minute. So in like an hour and a half interview with him, he doesn't want to talk about anything but Ron Paul. I'm going to get him on the radio this week, by the way. Set Tarpley up, Chris, as soon as you can, like, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You know, whenever when I get back, I'll be back like Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm not sure yet. But... He was just flipping out on Ron Paul. I'm like, look, they stole it from Ron Paul. He won the first few states. He's not in there. He's injecting ideas against the global oligarchy. Frothing. Frothing. That was a good burp right there. Frothing. And he kept doing, after we got off the air, he doing these leprechaun things. And I've got an hour and a half plus interview with him, 30 minutes with Tucker. It's up at Infowars.com. It's just titled Alex Jones Interviews, Webster Tarpley at Bilderberg. But at the end of the night, and my phone was so full of videos, and when I recorded it, it ended, you know, it, it cut off the end, but it still is pretty good. It's only 38 seconds long. He was doing 
these quotes, and I guess Aaron had seen it. I had not seen Leprechaun 5. I hadn't seen Leprechaun 1. I don't watch a lot of movies, folks. I'm, I'm into reality. I see some, though. I'm going to go see uh, Prometheus coming out in a few days uh, that we wrote the analysis on at Infowars.com. I only have the script. I haven't seen it yet. Alex Jones exposes the secrets of Prometheus. If you want to see that, it's online. But I'm digressing, aren't I? The point is, there's no teleprompters here, so it's all real. That I love Tarpley, but I'm, I've never seen him veer off into just political talking points to savage Ron Paul. And it was endless demonization of Rand Paul, endless demonization of Ron Paul. And I'm like, well, let's say they're not perfect. Aren't there bigger fish to fry? No, no, no. So I wanted to just take on Syria and Iran and Russia and Bilderberg and wouldn't get off of it and kept doing leprechaun imitations. So finally, I got him to do a leprechaun uh, imitation. Turns out he's a big fan of Leprechaun 5. See, we knew it was Leprechaun 5 because Aaron has seen it. And uh, so this is Webster Tarnpley. Uh, he only had like two glasses of vino in him, uh, doing his imitation of Ron Paul. It's titled Ron Paul equals evil leprechaun. It's up at Infowars.com if you want to see the video. But here's the audio. Stay with us. Be cold. Be cold. A friend with weed is a friend indeed, but a friend with gold is the best I'm told. Ron Paul's program in synthesis. So he's a devil weed dealer. Well, draw your own conclusions. If the shoe fits, wear it. So what did you watch the Leprechaun 5? Is there any activism? Lep in the hood, out to do no good. Yes, uh, words to live by. So watch out for somebody who is promising uh, gold. Webster, give us, tell us how you learned Leprechaun's secret powers. Actually, I, I wrote the script. You wrote the script. Hold on, guys. We're doing a deep interview. I wrote the script. All right, he wrote the script. That's where my phone, yeah, he says he wrote the script. That's where uh, my phone cut out there because it was so full of videos. It stopped right there, but that's where it ended. And I was just thinking, really, Ron Paul, that's what the mainstream media says. They want your kids on drugs. He calls marijuana, Tarpley does narcotics. I don't smoke marijuana. I've tried it before. don't particularly like it. I like caffeine, nicotine, and alcohol. I'll tell you right now, though. Do I need to go to prison because of that? Obviously not. The point is, is that Tarpley went on this tirade about how drugs are evil, we've got to put people in prison. This is how they took over the country. I mean, Goldman Sachs, all these banks have been, well, not even Goldman Sachs, it's Wells Fargo, Wachovia, $378 billion in laundered drug money, Bloomberg, AP. I mean, look it up right now. And just to get it, Ron Paul, he's saying, oh, Ron Paul wants to have everybody on weed, and he says gold is good and all this. I mean, just wild wild. So I thought for Tarpley we would play this famous remix of when uh, folks thought they found a leprechaun in their tree because that's as, as realistic as criticizing Ron Paul and claiming he's an evil leprechaun. So Tarpley, this one's for you. Here it is. Like he look like a crackhead. Yeah. Leave me up. Mon. Yeah. I want to know. No, with the gold. Yeah. I want, I want, I want the gold. Give me the gold. He look like a crackhead. I want the gold. I want the gold. Give me the gold. I want the gold. He might be a crackhead. Yeah. I want the gold. I want the gold. I want the gold. I want the gold. Give me the gold. Must be a crackhead. Oh my God. Let's play Tarpley one more time. I mean, just Tarpley at the intro of this, and I know we got serious news, and, and, your, and, and your phone calls and everything, but my God, this is now the attack that Ron Paul is an evil leprechaun. He says, beware those. He says, beware those that say they got gold. And so he says he's a leprechaun dealing weed because he's seen Leprechaun 5 where it's a drug dealing leprechaun. Here it is. <laughs> A friend with weed is a friend indeed, but a friend with gold is the best I'm told. Ron Paul's program in synthesis. That's enough. So Turn him off. Needless to say, this video has gone viral right now. 
And some people are mad at me for this, criticizing Tarpley. Like, this is out of context. No, the whole interview with Tarpley's up there. I mean, it, it's just, come on. I'm against the drug war. It's a fraud. The bigger it gets, the more drugs are on our street. If you go back 20 years ago, there is four times the cocaine and like six times the opium now. The old number was three times the cocaine, three times the opium. It's much higher than that now. The big banks are all caught shipping it in, running the aircraft. They bust little idiots that use it. Meanwhile, they've got all these prescription drugs that are the synthetic version that all these radio hosts are on. They get caught with it, don't get in trouble. Stop it! Areas of Europe have done the right thing and decriminalized it, and drug use has gone down. Stop it! Do I love the whole weed head culture? No, I don't. Has it turned a lot of people into couch potatoes? Yeah. Don't throw them in prison for it. If somebody wants to be an idiot and hurt themselves, that's their problem. I mean, you know, I'm tired of the nanny state. It's only been used to take our liberties. We're going to go to break. We're going to come back, and I'm going to give Aaron the helm to give you an in-depth report. And in the final segment, I'll run through the gambit or gauntlet of other big news we've got out of Bilderberg 2012. We have routed them, hundreds of newspapers in the U.S., conservatively. I mean, I couldn't even follow them all. Hundreds picked up the uh, Washington Post piece that they never had admitted existed uh so all of this is happening and hey there's a shadowy group meeting in secret government officials what's their agenda aaron dykes is going to break it down in depth this won't be soundbite though this will be in-depth names facts groups who are the globalists who are the foreign banks that took over america what are they trying to set up because they want to set up a tyranny here in this country and worldwide does that mean the ruskies are good no but the banksters are the ones that took this country over Ladies and gentlemen, this is Aaron Dykes. This is the InfoWars broadcast. Alex Jones live on Sunday. He's been gracious enough to give me a segment. And this has been the biggest Bilderberg meeting of all time. I'm not saying that lightly. On the 60th meeting of the Bilderberg Group, the Washington Post, who are founding members of the Bilderberg Group, Catherine Graham, now her son Donald Graham, attending every year, finally are covering it, asking the question, is Bilderberg a conference on world affairs or a powerful global cabal? That has been answered long ago. They are in there starting World War III, and I don't say that lightly. They are doing the Syria issue, and they're also working Russia and China. Bilderberg Bilderberg's own group admits they're meeting on the euphemistic term of the future of democracy in Russia, China, and the Middle East. And you really cannot separate the domino that is Syria from the Iran war. We know they want Brookings and others saying which path to Persia. Meanwhile, they're menacing Putin. Uh, they're developing and doing deals in China. And we have record numbers of attendees at Bilderberg from those countries and the related entities in those areas. And so you have the Syrian National Council, Basma Kodmani, meeting with the Bilderbergers. That's the opposition group. They're figuring out how and when to topple Assad there. That could kick off something as bad as World War III. And install al-Qaeda. And install al-Qaeda, of course, admittedly airlifted from Libya, admittedly so-called ally of the West in the Libyan conflict now in Syria while we supposedly still have this war on terror here at home in occupied America and they've got three top Russian people meeting with the Bilderberg at the same time they're meeting on Syria are we still connected to the network guys Keep going. We're, we're still going. Gary Kasparov has put himself out there as a Western-controlled opponent to Putin. He's been protesting and getting in staged arrest for years and years. He's meeting there. He's the former chess champion, and he is there to oppose Putin, let him know he's put on notice. Meanwhile, they set up the Russian International Affairs Council two years ago. Two years ago. If you don't recognize that name, it's time to start studying history. The Rhodes Council Group. The Royal International Affairs is the beginning of that uh, Cecil Rhodes Foundation. The Council on Foreign Relations is the American counterpart. They have them in all the other Western countries, and now they've set one up in Russia as well. That head of the Russian International Affairs is here, Igor Ivanov. You've also got Anatoly Chubas. Uh, not saying I can pronounce these Russian names, but they are, again, leading towards war, conflict, total tensions. Meanwhile, a gigantic conference on China. You've got Ching Li of the Brookings Institute, who specializes in China. He's American, but of course of Chinese descent. 
represent John Huntsman, not only a little-known uh, GOP candidate for president, but the former ambassador to China, of course, discussing China, and David Shamba of George Washington University discussing China, two Chinese counterparts, Ying Fu and Yiping Huang, uh, the first of which is the vice minister of foreign affairs, the other an economics professor. It is all happening this year at Bilderberg. You can see it on the map. If and when World War III happens, you know it started here. We know what happened with World War I. We know what happened with World War II. We know it was concocted to destroy nationalism and put up world government. British and intel even funded Hitler. Again, it's not that Hitler worked for him. They created him. Yeah, and when this all goes down, you know what happened here. Are they a world affairs debating conference or a global cabal? I think it speaks for itself. Why'd they want to keep it secret? These are the criminals working out these deals, and of course, all the American counterparts uh, from the NSA to the Department of Defense Secretary, all the other departments what also Fareed here. Zakaria calling for starving. And of course, today, Fareed Zakaria has called for starving Syrians. Meanwhile, uh, the writer Alex called out before calling for world government. Gideon Rackman is pretending to play with the carrot rather than the stick, saying, for now, we should play diplomacy in Syria and just expose the. Uh, they act like they gave a diplomacy. It's another false debate while Time Magazine says uh, how bad he is for writing that we should go with diplomacy. And they say when military intervention makes sense, you go. If you're a real power, you will intervene when you can. And not Al-Qaeda in charge. They no. are saying go on Syria. This is serious. This is World War III. Syria leads directly to Iran. Russia and Russians China are in the balance. The Russians say they're going in. That's why they're getting the martial law ready, folks, to cover the banker collapse they mean to take over Agenda 21. It is all lined up. You must study the list. You must look up these names and see what they're involved in. It's all right here on the list. It's so incredible. It yeah, instead of knowing all incredible. the fake sports facts, learn about the New World Order and all these facts. You're designed for it, America. You can beat these people. They're doing it all in your name. And meanwhile, you've got the other admitted agenda, so-called energy solutions. We know they're in there meeting about carbon tax. That's been admitted and exposed. Cybersecurity, of course, austerity and the political scene in the U.S. and Europe. But one more thing I exposed last week uh, on the InfoWars Nightly News, how Cory Booker, who is an Obama surrogate, says, no, we aren't going to attack finance capital. We're not attacking Bain. We're not attacking KKR or the other entities, Blackstone, you name it. He says, no, I'm friends with Kravis. They own the pensions here in New Jersey, and they own $6 billion of pensions in the Texas Teachers Retirement System. Guess who's meeting at Bilderberg this year? The head of the Texas Retirement System of Texas, Britt Harris. But Bilderberg saving us. You've heard of Alex for years and years and years. I never looked this up. I wish I had about how they're stealing the pensions. Guess what happened two weeks ago on their three billion in holding, six billion total with their other entity, KKR, Henry Kravis, the big leverage buyout looter, scammer, stealer. Texas Teachers Pension Fund invests in casinos, loses ninety nine billion. That's one billion dollars. They didn't lose it, just like all the idiots that bought Facebook. It went to the mafia. They're called Bilderberg. Ha, ha, ha. That's right. They shorted that stock. They knew when to buy and they cashed in and they closed out a full sixth of the total value of the Texas teacher's pension, a full third of KKR's holding. That is wrong. And then they'll have the teachers beg for more government to get the pension. They'll just steal that. They'll have cops write more tickets saying you'll go bankrupt. They'll just steal that. See how the plan works? As they suck it out, they demand more government and it's all sucked out. That's how the scam works. Ha, ha. And we know and as there's more government, it bankrupts the economy, Aaron, and then they get to buy it up cheap. Yeah, and we know the education system is terrible, but the teachers themselves are good, hardworking people. They're expecting retirement. They get paid peanuts it's as been teachers. It's designed to dumb them down. They're not, teachers teach what the feds want. It's coming, though. Alex warned they were still in the pensions, and here's the evidence meeting this year. But that is nothing compared to World War III. I just laid it out for you. Go look it up for yourself. Alex will be back on the other side of this break. Even though everybody's going to lose their pensions, it'll be okay because we're in World War III. So much else happened this year. It's a great cultural awakening event outside of the global cabal. Uh, back in the old days, Tucker and the other reporters, they had their moles in there, but they basically stood alone. I watched when Alex went in 2006 to Ottawa. 
the Ganda protests, that swelled the numbers over the years from dozens to hundreds. Now, clearly, more than 1,000 protesters, several thousand over the several days. That awakening is happening. I've watched people first come to these events, later become their own media, later become their own activists, watch them grow, spread the word, double, triple our audience. That's all on the positive side of this year at Bilderberg. And, of course, a lot of interesting photos, too. Kevin Warsh of the Federal Reserve Board was filmed. He looks like Scarface. And uh, a lot of big Russian deals, too. Uh, BP, Goldman Sachs, of course, meet every year. Peter Sutherland, former head of both of those companies, uh, meeting with Russia on selling off the big venture between BP and TNK. Uh, meanwhile, you remember just a few weeks ago, Nathan Rothschild of the famous family lost his libel suit it's official. He is a puppet master. He met with the oligarchs and the important people. They're merging the Rothschilds and Rockefellers. The Rothschilds have always been fronts. That's right. So the cabal is concentrating its power. It's going for broke as it knows the end time is here in terms of the economy collapsing, in terms of the war mounting. Can you feel the pressure? Syria is next. We've known that, but here it comes. Iran is after that. Russia and China in the stakes. Alex back after this, but I can't stress how important it is. I don't know if I've ever been this fired History's up. History's happening. You better tune out of football. We'll be back. Great job, Aaron. And I swear on the altar of God that I will defend the innocence. My wife sent me a photo of my youngest daughter, four years old, with a big basket of peaches from some peach trees in our backyard, and she is the image of innocence and goodness and is so good is so beautiful is so so innocent it, it drives me into a rage the globalists have all the rockefeller documents and i was telling the police at the event looking up they were looking them up on ipads and freaking out rockefeller foundation their website saying they put poison in food and water you know how they're dumbing us down how they're poisoning us the cancer rates it's so crazy but it's real hitler lined you up and shot you these guys just do it covert we're doing it for our children. We're doing it for the innocents. Who cares what your neighbors think? Who cares about your own safety? Who cares even about your own children's safety? It's everybody's children. We either beat this or there's no future. In fact, I even wrote that note before Aaron went into his angry rant. This is the death of America, the death of freedom. This is a total globalist takeover. For heaven's sakes, the media tells us the UN now runs our military. I, I mean, we've been conquered. This is a joke. This is a joke. I'm going to give each caller about 45 seconds. I want to get to everybody. Gary in New Orleans, you're on the air. Welcome. Hi, Alex. I'm a little harsh myself. I was at the uh, Louisiana Republican Convention, and I'd like to report on the total chaos that went on there. I'm an elected national delegate. Yes, they tried to block the Ron Paul delegates. Ron Paul won Louisiana, didn't he? We and my ragtag group of friends took over the Republican Party in Louisiana. And we are in control, and they can sit down and shut up. But I'd like to tell you what happened at the National Convention. I'm a, I was elected to the Rules Committee, and me and my friends worked on the rules to bring to the convention yesterday. And a, one hour, bef I mean, one day before, we got an email where the LA GOP came up with new rules, essentially saying that our rules will be good in 2016. All right, so sure, there's continue. all sorts of fraud. I know there's all. I appreciate your call. There's all sorts of chicanery going on. He won Iowa. He won Maine. They're not going to let Ron Paul get in there, but he won by running. He got real issues injected. Great job, buddy. Okay, Scott in Colorado, you're on the air. Welcome, sir. Hello. Go ahead, Scott. Yes. How you doing, Alex? Uh, worldwide broadcast. We only got 45 seconds per caller. You got a point? I want to ask you a question. Do you know who Peter Thiel is? Yeah, that's he's, the he's, uh, he's, he's that's the creator. Of... You just asked me a question. He's the creator of uh, PayPal, and he gave $2 million to Ron Paul. Yes, he's the biggest Ron Paul supporter, and he's on the Bilderberg Steering Committee. Yeah, the Bilderbergs want to take over the libertarian movement because they know it's taken America back. They understand that. Ron Paul has no control over who gives him money, and Ron Paul's always voted the way he votes. So the system makes that a way to discredit him because some guy with tens of billions of dollars uh, gave him a couple million dollars. Yes. 
Don't worry, though. You're not going to get Ron Paul. You're going to get Mitt Romney. Uh, or you're going to get uh, Obama, but now the foundations are putting out the cognitive dissonance people to demonize Ron Paul because of the movement for liberty and anti-globalism. So go ahead, blow Ron Paul away. Let's give them what they want. Go ahead. It's a, it's a, right nightmare, here in it's a nightmare here in America when we're looking at the perspective of two sides of the same coin with Mitt Romney and Barack Hussein Obama. These two men don't have a dime's worth of difference between them. And we look at Exactly, but as, you're busy. Hold on, put him on hold. Exactly. I already know what you're going to say. But you're busy talking about Ron Paul. Don't worry. They beat him. And they gave him two million bucks and said he worked for the Bilderberg Group. Okay, he couldn't control who gave him money. That's them trying to take over the libertarian movement. Okay, exactly. So what do we do? What do we do? See, what we do is we keep doing what we're doing. We're winning the info war right now. And I want to thank you, Alex, for doing what you're doing. People want to make it out to, to, to make it seem like you're out there making money. I laugh at T Tucker Carlson's best efforts coming after Alex Jones. Well, of course. You, I, God bless you, you, sir, but I got to jump to the next person. Of course I'm making money. I got 35 employees. I wish I didn't have to spend my time making money. And the sales guys come in and go, you didn't plug any of the sponsors this week. We have to give that money back. The truth is I'm not worried about the money. The little bit I got, I'm totally happy. I'm not like a globalist wants to run whole continents of the planet. So, yeah, buy our products, go to InfoWars.com, click on our sponsors. But of course that red herring of, oh, it, money. They're mad I'm successful. They're mad about it. They want to run the whole deal. Vote with your dollars, folks. Okay, let's move quick here. Uh, who's up next? Charles? Charles in California, you're on the air. Go ahead. Alex, uh, how's it going, everybody? Uh, I just have two simple questions for you. Well, not really, actually. <laughs> First one, um, when will the mainstream media cover these issues of Agenda 21, uh, Bilderberg, or will uh, somebody like Barry Sotero or uh, General uh, Stubblevine do this? Well, yeah. No, I mean, the New York Times said, oh, there's a big movement against Agenda 21. Here's how you counter it. Yeah, the U.N. wrote a treaty, and yeah, they run our local governments. But, uh, you know, what's the big deal? Uh, what's the big problem? So they don't deny the world government. They just go, there's weirdos that don't like it. They're conspiracy theorists because they don't like it. It's not, wow, these folks were right. World government's being announced by private foreign corporations. We're being taken over by a new enemy, a new system we couldn't recognize, not an armed enemy, but a foreign corporate enemy that then takes over and then arms against us with this huge arms build up against humanity. They just can't imagine that this is happening, but people are waking up. My second question, Alex, do you guys need an uh, intern at your offices in Austin? We do, but I usually just hire people and just pay them and hope that they'll be happy and do the job. we got a great crew, but uh, people can send us resumes and things. We're trying to hire three or four more reporters, more video editors. We're trying to spend all that evil money we're making to actually build the organization. Because, see, I care about ideas and information. That's why they're scared of me. They know we're getting more money. We're getting bigger by the minute. We're hiring more people. They're pissed. And they're like, have the libertarians, have the Democrats, have the Republicans. Don't give Alex money. He's bad. He wants your money. Money. But the government takes your money at gunpoint. The big corporations have government right regulations to shut you down. I'm just here winning the info war. That's why they want to shut the web down as well, because they know the sleeping giant that is humanity is awakening. Well, thank you for the call. Uh, Christopher in Missouri, and then Wiley and John. Christopher, you're on the air. Thanks, Alex. I love you, man. God bless you and Aaron Dykes and Jacobson and all you guys. Uh, just give me 20 seconds and I'll be off. Um, your spoofs about, like, Cobra Commander was awesome. I think you should do one about, like, Cobra. Officer Jack Boot and uh, good old boy, and maybe your uh, British royalty one. You should do some spoofs like that. Um, I've been listening to you since 2005. I've been a Prison Plan TV subscriber. Uh, Jordan Maxwell, Tex Mars. Your best interviews, everybody look them up. You should have those guys on more often. Jordan Maxwell hasn't been on in I, I agree. We've been trying to set up Jordan Maxwell. I want to get Tex back on. We'll, we'll make sure that happens. And last call, last point, Alex, man. I love you, man. Um, a cold aspect of the New, new, new World Order. Uh, you, you don't talk about Bohemian Grove enough, and you don't talk about the occult astral aspects like the Western occult symbolism interview you did with that Russian station. Everybody should look that up. Western occult symbolism, Alex Jones on YouTube. I love you, Alex. Thanks a lot, man, for all the work you do. Love you too, brother. I love everybody that wants freedom. We're in it together. In it to win it. Hang separate if we don't hang together. Um, yeah, we cover the occult. I've made films about it. The elite are a bunch of lunatics. 
Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Wiley in Nevada. You're on the air. Uh, Alex, I want to congratulate you on Build the Bird. Uh, you've made a lot of people aware of what's going on. Uh, I just have an idea I'd like to throw out at you uh, for July 4th. I'd like to call it the 200 million man rally, reclaim our Independence Day, where everybody gets together in their own towns and own cities and discuss what we can do against this crisis that we're facing in our government today. Well, our government's been taken over. We have to recognize it's been hijacked. We're told the U.N. runs our military. That's high treason. This is on C-SPAN. I mean, this is public, folks. We're not in the U.S. anymore. We've got to admit it to ever have a chance of getting it back. Uh, but I hear you. And, yeah, there's 312 million Americans. 49% um, of them are men. 51% are women. Genetically, we have more women and old mammal species than uh, males. And, yeah, if men would just stop... The fake facsimile of male power is sports, knowing all the factoids there. Male minds are meant to know the factoids of their enemies, their friends, the lay of the land politically. But men are all walking around not using their computer space in business and life and their families to be the leader, to help their family, to deal with threats. They think the battle is all sports, and it's a template matrix fantasy that they're living in. So sports is the big enemy. Uh, and uh, we are going to go to one more call here. God bless you, Wiley. Oh, we're out of time. John in Texas, 10 seconds. John in Texas, hit us, hit us. Hey, uh, Alex, thanks for taking my call. Hey, I'm just calling about uh, the Jeff Barron case and John Margettis. They put a human being into receivership. Uh, you can get all the information. In yeah, the yeah, they're That's bringing back debtor prisons. We're out of time. I'll see you back live on the radio tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, InfoWars.com. We'll see you then. Great job, crew. Milderberg 2012, big success. We blew them wide open. This year. I also found out that the SWAT team have been listeners of the Fairfax County, Virginia um, Police Department since I was there four years ago. They found out about the show. They had it at the same Marriott Conference Luxury Center. And the police found out about us then, and then the entire SWAT team became listeners. I was told by one member of the SWAT team, I later ran into another one who was out there with, for riot control, and was like, you know, hey, we love the show, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, uh, you know, don't cross the street again, or I'm going to get fired if I don't arrest you. But then I just said, okay, arrest us, and they had to stop that, because I looked up the law and said, your commander cannot tell you to not let us cross the street here. Again, I went through the code with them, and they said, we know, we know. Tell them that. So a lot of stuff happened. It was it was wild. The police, by the end, totally came over to our side. We'd say, raise your hands if you're against the globalist in there. Uh, on video, on live feeds, so raise your hand if you support the Constitution against the New World Order. They'd raise their hands. It was like inches from Ceausescu in Romania when the police and military turned on the dictator and, well, you know what happened. I mean, it's really happening, folks. And and the police kept seeing, like, Chinese uh, ambassadors and stuff coming out. It's well-known China announced in mainstream news in the Washington Post two weeks ago that they're buying up TV, radio, movie production houses, um, theater chains, biggest one in the country, and they said to influence American media. A year ago, or a year and a half ago, Red Dawn, the new se sequel, or it's a, it's a remake, didn't come out because it depicts the Chinese government invading with Latin America, which is actually one of their battle plans that's been on the books, uh, that's been leaked. And they had to go back and just stop the movie. It's, and it may not even be released last time I checked. They're making them re-edit it and reshoot, and put in with CG that it's North Koreans invading, which is laughable. They can't even, uh, it was all Western investment built China up. Uh, North Korea doesn't have cars that they didn't buy in the 50s, you know, that are U.S. or Russian made. Um, they, are, they have electricity in what, about 8% of the country. They kill millions every decade, literally literally eating humans, cannibalism, the government does. Look it up if you don't believe that. True stranger in fiction is totally insane. That's what total government is, total hell. And so we have all of that situation uh, unfolding. But to watch the police, this is a big story, because this is happening all over the country. I've already seen it happening with the military. Uh, the numbers are there. We've seen the polls. Well, I mean, a great one is 70-plus percent of all military donations to all candidates, Republican and Democrat, for president, went to Ron Paul. I mean, what does that tell you? The average Saturday and Sunday were just wild. Uh, Saturday was uh, pretty darn wild as well. We've learned a lot of the inside scoop from Bilderberg 2012. Uh, the establishment is not pleased 
the bullhorning was so loud that I'm even more deaf uh, than I was before. In fact, I've got to put a note here about bullhorning. I've got to tell you about this. We learned how to take megaphones and bullhorn into one and then to another. Not just everybody talking on different bullhorns, but have one person through a string of bullhorns, like something out of Dr. Seuss book, and it does something with the residents. Like when I scream in a bullhorn, it's even louder. It, it somehow puts out more sound. People don't understand that. It's not just talking into one, it's the yelling into one. I'm legendary for that, really discovering it. I'm sure others have discovered it as well. This, though, got so loud that it was causing me to have migraine headaches, and I would have to go lay down on the ground. I mean, it was so loud, Charlie Skelton of The Guardian said that he had to get away from it. And we were shaking the windows of it because the one area where they have the conference area is the one area that sticks off the property to like 40 feet from the street. They put up these big fences and black tarps. People ripped those down, by the way. And it was shaking the building. And the first day, the police were really nice. Then some of the more younger people got there and yelled at them and stuff for no reason. And then they got a little bit of uh, abusive back. And they were under orders. But by the time they all listened to my radio show, well, a lot of them were already listeners. We had that on video. And then they got in trouble saying they were. Nicest police I've ever seen anywhere. Uh, they're in Roanoke, Virginia, uh, the county there. Yeah, Fairfax County. I just called it Roanoke because that's where we're. <laughs> I'm, man, my brain is fried. Fairfax County Police. And then today we were saying, who supports the Constitution? They're raising their hands. Who doesn't like those globalists in there? They're raising their hands. It was amazing. The, the, the police were looking into the Logan Act. They had iPads out looking at Bilderberg's statements and quotes about world government. And the, I would tell the cops, look up the U.N., telling Congress three months ago they now run the U.S. military. The cops looked it up and were freaking out, as they should. <laughs> and they were looking up all the names. It was They were investigating, like we do. And by the end, they were absolutely on our side. It was, it was amazing. We'll be right back. Uh, big news straight ahead. Stay with us. It is Sunday, the 3rd of June, 2012. We're going to be here for the next two hours. If my voice is even more frog-like than normal, it has become 72%. At one point it was 76, but the, if you aggregate it all together, it's 72, 73. Right there, shows they're awake. Ron Paul talks about the New World Order, global government, private Federal Reserve, Bilderberg Group, false flags, everything. And I've told you now, all over the country, the police are, are, are waking up. And I've noticed the more professional uh, the better the training, the uh, the better the posture of the police, everything about them, the more they're listeners. Now, you go to New York or something, folks, and some of the police aren't listeners. They're the guys got their shirts tucked in. It is big, pot-bellied guys with their hats on crooked, smoking cigars and cigarettes. I've shot video of this. Screaming at people, yelling at nice families that ask for directions. I mean, it is a lawless crew of, uh, of thugs. It's a gang. And of course, the original gang in New York was the police. That's in history books. And I guess it never changed. And they pick on the cops that aren't corrupt. It is just total thugism and are just incredibly rude to the tourists. You name it. Everybody's experienced it. Uh, it and it's getting worse and worse. It's getting worse and worse. And now Bloomberg says he's going to ban all 16 ounce and above drinks. And again, the government tells you what size your toilet is, what size light bulbs, uh, your car, your property. People are like, that really sounds like nanny state control freakism. Of course it is. You can still drink aspartame that makes you go blind and causes cancer. They put fluoride in the water, sevenfold increase in cancer in boys and men. That's only threefold in women with it. They do all of this, but then it's like, oh, everybody's getting sick. GMO and all this. Don't worry. We'll just tell you you can't have red meat. They're now saying that. They're saying they're going to restrict how much you can buy. I'm not kidding. Look it up. Salt, all these things. But meanwhile, they want to put statin in the water and make kids take it when it literally eats your brain. I mean, look it up, ladies and gentlemen. Total control freakism. I know I talked about this Friday. I talked about it right through the trip this week. All the big Canadian papers are saying that they want to start arresting people that don't believe in man-made global warming. Well, another Commonwealth country... Uh, Australia, you can look this up. Australians to be fined 1.1 million and then arrested the second offense. 1.1 million, folks. That's, I forget the ratio, but that's a lot of money. It's, it's close to a million bucks, U.S. Or, but, but if you go, I mean, look this up. I, I can't even believe it's this bad. 
uh, and they say in there that if you criticize or talk bad about the carbon tax, 1.1 million Australian fine, and then jail time. And, they, it, and, and the headline said, carbon cops, and has them quoted, yes, we'll be in cafes and on the street every It is your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships that fund so much of what we do here in this operation. And then we're more than happy for the TV show after it's aired live, then be leaked out onto the web to tens of millions of people. That's our goal. Broadcast coming to you from Virginia. In the last two hours, I pulled out with my fellow info warriors out of Chantilly, a suburb of DC, and I'm pointed to south. Then I will turn east, west, and then go to my beloved home state of Texas. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Obviously, my voice is uh, laboring a bit because I've been bullhorning since last Wednesday straight through to just about two hours ago. What was it, two hours ago, guys, that we, uh, Aaron, that we, yep. that we got back from the, the protest and the globalists leaving early? Henry Kissinger, Bill Gates, all of them getting caught on tape. We have some of those photos up at Infowars.com right now and on our Twitter at Real Alex Jones. I should also add that before I come back from this breaking it into all the big developments geopolitically, but also Bilderberg and how big a deal it is that it's been blown wide open, I will be on Coast to Coast AM for a full hour tonight in the first hour with George Norrie. So that's midnight central, 1 a.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. or 11 p.m. Mountain, uh, 10 p.m. Pacific. So that is coming up tonight as well. Coast to Coast AM dot com is their website. I'm Alex Jones of Infowars dot com and PrisonPlanet dot TV. I am a bit shell shocked just by shaking thousands of hands in between bullhorning, filing reports, talking to uh, insiders and sources, and dealing with the police. It has been a circus of the last four days. Really, Thursday, Friday, as I have been bullhorning probably five to six hours a day for the last four days, four and a half days or so. And folks always ask, Alex, why is your voice so deep and scratchy and gravelly? Uh, I, I did not have uh, that deep of a voice, as you can hear on my radio show, if you heard tapes of it 17 years ago. It was there. The intense screaming at demonstrations and bullhorning, and I guess not being voice trained is the reason. So I guess in a way... Uh, no weapon formed against us shall prosper because it is a signature voice, that of an 80-year-old man, I guess, and folks like it. Enough of that, though, just letting you know why I'm a little bit uh, deeper in the octave here today. We are going to have open phones in the first hour for the thousands, thousands of people that came to Chantilly, Virginia, through Wednesday right through this afternoon. I've now gotten in the InfoWars command bus and we have pointed it uh, south, and then we'll point it west on our trek back to Tejas, back to our beloved Texas. Uh, but it's just wonderful to meet the people from all over the U.S., Canada, Germany, England that came, uh, Mexico, uh, that came to the Bilderberg event. We totally sh devastated it. I'm going to go over that, why that's important, the massive international news coverage, the massive coverage here, the Washington Post, for the first time in its history, because they were the only media allowed in back in the 50s, that they're part of it, reported on Bilderberg, but didn't point out that they've been part of it throughout history. Uh, just that, oh, by the way, our owner got invited this year. So they did do that. London Guardian, I don't know, seven, eight big reports. Uh, the Post got published in hundreds of newspapers. The Associated Press, or republished, uh, covered it. Obviously, that's in thousands. Uh, this is devastating. They want to keep it a secret because there have been multiple... 
there were, what, indictments and stuff, but the prince, Bernhard, got away with it and got out of the country. The guy that started it, the Nazi. Uh, the Lockheed Martin scandal in the 70s, Hillary got fined 300 and plus grand, it was 335,000 back in 94 for being at a meeting, a Bilderberg meeting, and got caught uh, discussing uh, with big insurance companies how to scam folks with her health care plan, claiming it was socialist health care. I'm not even for that, but it was worse than that. It was corporatist where the insurance companies control the care, cut back what you can get, but charge you more and make you buy it. That's why the insurance companies wrote Obamacare, and the big companies, of course, are all exempt. So that's unjust weights and measures. We're going to be breaking all that down today, but I want to hear from people that were at Bilderberg.